Welcome to Statistics for Survey Session 2 Tables, Optional Segment 1, Reporting Tables in APA Style. In this segment, we'll discuss how to create a table in the American Psychological Association style based on the 6th edition of the publication manual. There are no prerequisites for this, course, uh, for this segment and also no new terms will be discussed. In below is an example of a table in APA format. APA recommends to use Times New Roman as the font, size 12 and double spacing. The titles are centered except for the first column. So the educational program here is aligned to the left while all the other ones are actually centered. The caption of a table is the part on top of it. There are a few things to note here. The first one is the number itself, in this case number 23. This should be an Arabic numbering, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Not any Roman numerals like I, 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 V, etc. Only exception are the tables in an appendix. They actually get a letter in front of the numbering. So for example, table B2 would be the second table in appendix B. Another thing to notice is that the title goes underneath and in italic. And what I mean with underneath here is still on top of the table, but underneath the numbering. So we first actually have the table and the number, and then the title in italic straight below that. Note that there is no period here, so there is no period after the title. You should in the text somewhere above it refer to this table and then also use simply table and then the number. Do not use things like see table below or see table on page X, Y or Z. Simply say indeed uh, as can be seen from table 23. APA also has some guidelines connected to borders. In APA manual, these are called rules. As you might notice, there are no vertical borders. Nowhere in the APA manual mentions it to use them. Horizontal borders can be added by placing one on top and at the bottom of the entire table. You can also add one below the column titles up here or below a column spanner. A spanner, this is a column spanner because it spans over two columns. You can also add one above the total row and the last place where you can sometimes add one is above a so-called table spanner which is which sometimes used if you have like two tables in one larger one and then above it you can indicate that that's actually a next part of the table. There are also a few rules about the column titles, those. Um, all columns, including the first one, should have a title. The title should be clear, but as short as possible, and should be singular. So do not use frequencies, but simply use frequency. Start with a capital, and the percentage sign is allowed to be used as I've done, for example, here. The numbers in the table themselves are also subject to a few criteria. If the total is uh, to be expected to add up to 1 but cannot exceed 1, then no leading 0. So sometimes you will see people writing 0 0.4, but that's actually then incorrect if the total, as for example with the relative frequency, cannot exceed 1. Decimals should be to the number that can be justified by the measurement. So do not use uh, too many decimals if you've been rounding, uh, if you haven't been uh, rounding a lot, uh, because it might suggest the precision that was actually not there in the measurement. You can use a dash, which is uh, like a minus sign, but a little bit longer. Uh, if you cannot uh, get the data or it cannot be reported, <clears throat> so if I wouldn't know this uh, 20 uh, for some strange reason, although it's easy to calculate, I can write down a dash and then underneath I should write down a note uh, in italic uh, followed by a dot 
and then explain what the dash actually means uh, in this case. This was just a very quick brief summary of what can be found in the chapters 5.07 to 5.19 of the APA manual 6th edition. APA also has a separate manual called Presenting Your Findings, a Practical Guide for Creating Tables, which go even into more details.